Now let's see a theorem which connects the, the third case of the previous session. As the third case says that if P is a point outside the circle, then there are only two tangents which can be drawn from an external point P to the circle with a suitable radius. Now, since these two tangents can be drawn, the theorem says that those two tangents, the lengths of those tangents will be equal. The theorem exclusively says that for For the pair of tangents drawn, the pair of tangents drawn from an external point P, an external point P, external in the sense outside the circle, from an external point P to the circle. have equal lengths is what the statement the statement clearly says to understand more through the diagrammatic representation geometrically we understand that if this is a circle with say center vo then from an external point or a point outside the circle if i draw we know that clearly we can draw only two tangents <coughs> tangent one and tangent 2 then if I take this as a and B then mathematically the statement says that the two tangents will have equal length that is this will be equal to this implies PA is equal to PB is the property we identify in tangents connected with circles two tangents are equal if they are drawn from an external point to the circle. So let's see this proof of the statement through each of the construction of the given required to prove constructions and the proof. So let's see the proof of the given statement. So let's continue with the given part of the theorem. So in this case I consider a circle with center of wall. Is what we consider initially that is I take a circle with center wall now let P be a point outside the circle so it's next let P be a point outside the circle so let me take the point P which is outside the circle <coughs> Now, secondly, I come to drawing the tangents from P to the circle. Clearly, I see there are two tangents which can be drawn. As I see here, this is one of the tangent which is drawn. And this is another tangent which is is drawn out here at A and B. So here, I see that that implies PA and PB are tangents to the circle which is considered with center wall is what I get out here. Then thirdly I join AO and OB which can be taken as the construction. Now here the construction is join OA and OB the radii. Now OA and OB are the radii therefore they must be equal. Now since their radius is equal from equidistant from any point to the center therefore OA is equal to OB <coughs> is what we have. Also, I join OP because this helps me in the further proof of the given statement. So I just join OP using the concept of O join with P. Now let's use some of the geometrical properties 
to understand on how we can prove that this is equal to this. So here finally, the thing what I need to prove is that there are equal tangents or the lengths of the tangents are equal from an external point to the circle. Now since PA and PB are the tangents from external point P to the circle with center O, therefore I need to prove that PA is equal to PB. This equals this is what I need to prove in the proof of the theorem. So let's require to prove is PA is equal to PB is what I need to prove using the geometrical properties, the various geometrical properties in mathematics. So let's see the proof of this theorem continued. Now let's see the proof of the theorem where I need to prove that PA is equal to PB. So in this case, as I join O A and O B, which are equal because they are the radii of the circle. Similarly, we know that they are perpendicular to the tangents because we know that radius is perpendicular to tangent. So first, O A is equal to O B initially, which is identified because they are same radii for the circle. Secondly, I find that these two are 90 degrees because radius is always perpendicular to tangent is the theorem what we have seen in the previous sessions. Therefore, OA is perpendicular to PA or AP and OB is also perpendicular to PB is what we identify in either cases because by theorem radius is perpendicular to the tangent is what we have seen in the previous sessions. Therefore, this perpendicular to this and this perpendicular to this. Now, as I see the diagram here, I identify two triangles here, OAP and OBP are two triangles which are part of the entire diagram. So, I would like to take these two diagrams and show that they are congruent. My intention of showing the congruency will help me in finally making conclude that this is equal to this. So let's see how the congruency leads to the outcome of the proof or the final proof. So therefore, consider triangles. The first triangle here is OAP. Consider triangle OAP and triangle OBP are the two triangles which I consider. Now as I clearly observe that the right angle out here is PAO which is 90 degrees therefore angle PAO of the first triangle the first triangle is equal to angle PBO of the second triangle because each one of them is 90 degrees as already proved that this is perpendicular to this and this is perpendicular to this using radius perpendicular to tangent. So one of the angle is 90 degrees which is right angle is what we have from the two triangles. Similarly, I see that PO is the common length of the two triangles therefore they are equal that is the length PO is equal to the length PO itself because this is the common side for both the triangles therefore they must be equal common for the two triangles. Interestingly, we also observe that this is the hypotenuse for the both the right triangles which we have out here. So PO is the hypotenuse for the triangle OAP and PO is the hypotenuse for the triangle OBP as can be clearly seen that this side is opposite to 90 degrees in either of the triangles. Therefore, this leads to the hypotenuse, right angle hypotenuse and let's see one of the sides. Now, as I see in the two triangles, I see that OA is equal to OB because they are the same radii as given with the reason. Therefore, OA is equal to OB since same radii. We have already discussed in the previous session of this. So, this is the side property. This makes us clearly reflect on the right hand RHS congruency as we discussed in the topic of congruency in the previous sessions. 
since RHS is one of the congruency, therefore, since the right angle is equal, the hypotenuse are equal and one of the sides are equal. Therefore, the two triangles are said to be congruent and under RHS congruency. Is how we conclude the congruency of two triangles using RHS congruency property. Therefore, continuing from the previous part of the proof, I see that these two triangles are congruent by RHS congruency. Therefore, by RHS congruency, triangle OAP is congruent to triangle OBP as can be seen clearly. Now since the two triangles are congruent, therefore their angles and sides must be equal in all respects. Therefore the congruency makes us understand that all the sides and all the angles must be equal in their own respective manner. Therefore the congruency gives us PA is equal to PB and not only that we also identify that angle OPA is equal to angle OPB as can be clearly seen the angle bisects. Now this PA equal to PB implies the lengths of tangents as can be clearly seen from an external point to the circle are equal. That implies the lengths of tangents from the external point P to the circle are equal is what we conclude with the statement of theorem is how we get through the congruency RHS congruency of two triangles connected with the lengths of ta tangents equal. So whenever we draw an external point we assume that these two lengths are always equal for any point outside the circle from where the two tangents are drawn. Also to note there's a property we identify that PO bisects APB because of this property also, we get from the congruency that the line segment PO bisects angle APB. So, angular bisector, what we call. So, PO is the angular bisector of angle APB, is also which is identified from the congruency from the geometrical part of understanding each of the properties of congruency. Hence, proved.